Now then, it do say here, from Strawberry Field, Liverpool 25. Dear Jim, I would like to visit the Holy Land to see where Jesus lived. Could you do anything about it? Thanks very much, Gary. Well, that really took some fixing, but here we are in beautiful Israel, and we've brought Gary here by uh, train, by plane, and by ship. But not the usual sort of ship. This ship is the ship of the desert, <laughs> which is a camel. And he, here he comes now. Wow, how about that? Yeah. Wow, wee. <coughs> Look at this. Look at this. Lawrence of Liverpool. <laughs> Oh, was that good? Come here, come here. Yeah. Right, now listen. If we want to know something about Jerusalem, no better person to ask than the mayor of Jerusalem, a gentleman called Mr. Teddy Collick, and he's over here. Now come along, Lawrence of Liverpool. Now then, Gary, here is the mayor of Jerusalem, Mr. Collick, shake him by the hand, sit down here. And Mr. Collick, would you explain to Gary here something about your wonderful historic city? Well, I'm glad you came here while you are young. It may take a lifetime to learn about Jerusalem, but we'll try to do it fast. Most people in the world have two cities, their own and Jerusalem. It's an important city for half the people of the world. Historically, the Jews, then the Christians, and then the Muslims. Uh, the Jews came here with King David. He made it his capital. That was about uh, 3,000 years ago. The Christians came here as pilgrims and endangered their lives. They didn't fly in here like you. They came here uh, across the sea when pirates were on the sea and across the deserts. And recently, more recently, the Muslims. And we have rebuilt it. And when you will walk around the city or where you have looked before, you see the walls around the old city they had been there before, but last time they were rebuilt by Herod the king. And then on that, the Turks built another wall, a newer one. And on the Temple Mount, where the Temple of Solomon and the Temple of Herod stood, the Temple of God stood, there are now two mosques, two great mosques, probably the most beautiful buildings that were ever built anywhere in the world, the Dome of the Rock and the Aqsa Mosque. And a little further, back of it, a white cupola, the church of the Holy Sepulchre, sacred to well over a billion Christians. Mr. Colick, I'm going to ask Gary to say thank you to you in his lovely Liverpool accent, which I know you'll understand because you are, you are no stranger to Liverpool yourself. Gary, you shake hands with, with, with Mr. Mayor and thank him very much, eh? Huh? Thank you very much, Mr. Colick. Thank you for being here, and enjoy yourself and come back soon. OK, yeah. come on, let's go then. Let's see what this wonderful land is all about. <coughs> right. My goodness gracious, look at this boy. Look at this boy, Lawrence of Liverpool. So you can see that this where it's called the Via Dolorosa, which means this is where Jesus came with his cross. <coughs> Here you can see how difficult life was for Jesus when he was having to carry his cross all the way up this hill and up these steps, and it was a hot day like this. And, I mean, we're sweating enough now as it is, but just imagine having to carry your own cross up here. So these very stones that we're walking on, very, very historic, and it's a very wonderful occasion. Now, the Bible tells us that Jesus was crucified in a place called Golgotha, and that means the place of a skull. Now, Gary, that does look like a skull, doesn't it? That hill with the eyes and the broken nose and the rocky forehead and chin, and it is outside the city wall. And this is the path that leads to the tomb, so we will go through there now. Joseph of Arimathea asked for the body of Jesus because in the garden which he owned, there was a rock-hewn tomb. Now, Gary, you see, this tomb is all that the Bible describes it. 
it is hewn out of a solid rock. And this is where the body of Jesus would have been laid. And it's spacious enough for Peter and John to come into the tomb and looking there, see the grave clothes, but not the body of Jesus, because he had risen. And this is the great belief of the Christian faith, that because he is alive forevermore, we can be alive too forever if we believe on him. Right, listen, you. We've brought you all the way from the pool, right? Yeah. Shown you all where God lived, here, there, and everywhere. And you've seen now the end of the miracle. How about we should go off together and go see where he was born? Good idea? Yeah. Right. Okay. Listen, I've got a great idea. It is about uh, five miles from here to there. How about we should do it like he did it and we should walk? Yeah? Okay, yeah. You're strong enough? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You carry me if I get tired? No. You'd better. <laughs> right, off we go then. that then how about that nice hand ladies and gentlemen for that piece of film there. <laughs> that is your stick i brought back for you you can stand up take it and walk back over to the bean bags how about that then try see if you've got enough strength to manage it over there off it goes now ladies and gentlemen how about that? <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah.